Unlike the previous books of the Old Testament up to this point, uh, Daniel's a relatively short book. In fact, Come Follow Me only has us review the first six chapters. Uh, even though chapters 7 through 12, again, there's not many of them, are many great dreams that Daniel has with prophecies of the latter days. Uh, great, but we'll just to cover a few things of the first few chapters here. Give you some teaching ideas to help make Daniel fun and enjoyable and as well as insightful and, and spiritual and converting. So uh, just a little historical context. If you go to Daniel chapter 1, verse 1, it says the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim. If you recall from previous videos, there's that great history lesson we need to learn. Uh, this is the besiegement of Nebuchadnezzar before Lehi leaves Jerusalem. Remember, this isn't the great sacking and destruction of the city of Jerusalem. This is just the first besiegement when 10,000 Jews get uh, hauled off captive to Babylonia. That's when Daniel and his colleagues get hauled out. That's who we're talk talking with. So the first few chapters, Daniel's young. He's a young man. But then when you get to chapter 6, when he's thrown into the den of lions, he's over 90 years old. So you have a law of uh, time frame between Daniel chapter 1 and Daniel chapter 6. Uh, fun little activities to do. Daniel chapter 1, they talk about in verse 5, don't eat the king's meat. Well, if you're familiar with the complicated kosher system of Leviticus 11, of what you can and can't eat and what you can and can't drink and some things you just can't mix... Our word of wisdom is really simple. I mean, really, it's simple. This might be a great time to pull out the new For Strength of Youth pamphlet and have uh, your kids review, okay, what are the principles behind this? There's only a few things that it says avoid, stay away from. Drugs, coffee, tea, alcohol, tobacco, and so forth. But really, it's principle-based. So you could do a little comparison. Okay, let's take a look at the For Strength of Youth pamphlet and assign them to read it or do a little presentation. Again, make it learner-focused uh, and not teacher-centered. We don't want the teacher to be the center of the classroom or parents rule the conversation. Let the kids discover. I want you to read it. I want you to teach me. What does it say? And have them do a little presentation or something. Uh, what's the king's meat look like today? Make, let's make it relevant today. And then I would ask the important questions. Why? What blessings have you received from keeping the word of wisdom? Dot, dot, dot. Have some fun with that. Make sure they link it to Doctrine and Covenants section 89. Just a question I have. In, uh, in verses 6 and 7, they talk about the names. All of the, all of the Hebrew names, like Daniel, get changed into the Babylonian names. Belteshazzar, for example. But for some reason, in, in the book of Daniel, we keep the name Daniel. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we use their... Babylonian names, not their, not their Hebrew names. And I don't know why, but that's kind of fun. Uh, chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 in Daniel. There is an old, old's relative, I know, seminary video that I would show. It links those four chapters together. It links the power of obeying the word of wisdom and the power to interpret dreams and have spiritual manifestations. I know people think if you keep the word of wisdom, it's a law of physical health. I'm not saying it's not. But the real blessings of the word of wisdom aren't physical. Read section 89 on the Doctrine and Covenants. The real blessings aren't. You know, you can use those words and say, well, that's physical, but it's really not. Uh, if you want to run and not be weary, walk and not be faint, I know people who keep the word of wisdom that get tired. Uh, that's a spiritual blessing, not just a physical blessing. God never gets tired of doing his work and his glory. Uh, that's the kind of blessing that we get from keeping the word of wisdom. So the name of the video is God Gave Them Knowledge. You can go to YouTube, type it in, God Gave Them Knowledge. If you want to add LDS or Daniel, it'll pop right up there. It's a pretty good video. It shows the dream. It shows Daniel and his friends uh, obeying the word of wisdom of their day. It shows them in receiving the power of interpreting the dreams. It shows the power of faith. I mean, there's so many great gospel-centered principles in that video. Again, it's called God Gave Them Knowledge. I would show it and have a lot of fun with that. Uh, 
verse 3, or excuse me, chapter 3, when they're when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are put in the fiery furnace, I, I would probably ask some heartfelt questions and maybe have them write about it. I'll open up a journal and say, I just want you to write for a few minutes. And then you can have them read what they wrote or read what they wrote. I would say, where is the Savior in this story? And I would give them plenty of time to really ponder that. Maybe you can ask, how can the Savior help you when you are in the midst of your fiery furnaces of life? I would bring, so it's relevant, application, and bring the Savior into the center of that context right there, into the into that. Chapter 5 is probably the chapter that gets the least amount of time, but it's really a great story where God writes on the wall and no one can read it. But Daniel, who is a gifted interpreter uh, by the Spirit, reads the language. Just a fun little activity is maybe if you have a return missionary in your ward who speaks a foreign language, have him just come talk for a few moments in a foreign language and say, tell me what he said, or have him just write or write on the chalkboard a foreign language. Can someone read this? Just see who can read it. And then talk about how do, how can you interpret language? How can missionaries go learn a foreign language so quick? Again, make it relevant, applicable, but most importantly, see where's the Savior in the story and why did he do this? Then chapter 6, uh, the whole den of lions, thrown in the den of lions. This is a great story of faith. I would, uh, if you had little kids and you're in a primary class or at home, this is a great story to act out. Have them read it. They can make their own little costumes or props. You can use sock puppets. Uh, you could do some fun things. Even in a seminar or institute class, you could do an acting. Okay, guys, I want you to read. But you can't do anything unless it's actually in the scriptures, not just from what you remember. So they have to look and search and find the scriptures. And then, uh, most importantly, again, go straight to it. What lessons of the uh, What lessons does the Savior want me to learn from this story? And share that and build testimony. Or say. Okay, what type of lions do we have in the world today? Who is it that throws us in a den of lions? What was the king doing during this time, and why? That's a fascinating sub-story within this story. Are there people praying for you? You know, think about how many times you've been in the temple and heard a prayer for the youth uh, in the temple. It happens often. So you can have a little bit of fun with this week uh, and all of these chapters, and uh, hopefully there's some ideas that can be helpful for you. Enjoy studying Daniel.